Hey everybody, how are you doing today? I am recording this on February 14th, but whenever you're watching it, happy day. I want to talk to you today about manifesting an SP. It's all over YouTube how to do this. SP stands for a specific person. Um, I want to give you some of my thoughts about it, and if you want to do it, some thoughts about how to do it. Now, I'm going to start out by saying Claire Summer on YouTube and uh, what's her name? Scarlet from Unseen Seraph. These two ladies, I feel, do the best job if you want to manifest a specific person. I'm not totally in that camp, um, but you can. If you're manifesting anything, you can manifest your person if you want. You're, you're him, you're her. But I have some thoughts I want to share about five or six points. The first one is, is manifesting a specific person moral or is it ethical? And I will tell you, I do believe it is because I believe that you're not manipulating a human out there. Number one, you are the creator of your reality. So everybody out there is a play. It's a play. Everyone's acting in your play that you've created today, yesterday, last week. Um, and everyone needs to bow to your reality at some level. Okay, it sounds manipulative, but hold on. <laughs> um, the, the thing is, I believe you're jumping into a quantum reality where you are with that person. It's not like you're actually manipulating them. So you can look at like their puppets. Sounds manipulative, I know. Like their puppets and your reality is your reality. But I believe... Um, metaphysically that you're jumping into a quantum reality where you're with them. Because if you're thinking about someone, they're in your field. Abraham Hicks would say they're in your vortex. Neville Goddard would say creation's finished. If you're thinking about being with that person, there is a reality where you're with that person. So I think it's fine to do that. However, I have some caveats. Uh, I feel like so many people try to get their specific person back because they're desperate and they come out of serious attachment and a lot of perhaps trauma drama or trauma bonding. And if you really, really want your person and you're over attached and you're stalking them, uh, text bombing them, uh, you know, and you're chasing them or thinking about them, overthinking about them all the time, missing them, crying in your soup. I understand. I don't think anything, I don't think anything hurts more than failed love. Nothing. Childbirth, intense physical pain, being beaten up. I don't think anything hurts as bad as failed love. That's my opinion, but it's so painful. I understand. But often if you have, if you're coming at it from a level of attachment, it doesn't work because the relationship's vibing over here and you're vibrating down here in this attachment. And whether you're actually talking to the person or overthinking about them all the time and wishing for them and longing for them and crying, um, at some subconscious level, they're feeling it at the edge of the field. At the edge of their field, they're like, they're thinking, ooh, ew, they're just, when they think about you, it's just like, ick, ugh, you know, stage five clinger. And they can, they, 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 it's not attractive. And so if, even if you're overthinking and not acting, whether they blocked you, if they, they're married to somebody else now, it's gross and it's icky. And so super good. Uh, Claire Summer puts it this way. It's super good to get to the place where you're baking your own cake. You need to bake your own cake. In other words, you need to go, well, I recommend, I don't like to say need, ought tos and shoulds, but I recommend that you go bake your own cake, go live your best, most successful life. Do you want to be, you know, want to work on fitness, health, promotion, jobs, careers, new vehicle, new home, new people in your life, new friends, new activities, new hobbies, or whatever you want to expand and grow and learn. I would say build your own life and being successful is the best thing you could do. Being successful and working on your own self-confidence and self-concept and your own self-worth, all right? So when you're desperately needing someone and they're on the pedestal, that's telling you more about you than it is about them. Um, it, being in that, need, do, would you want to be with a needy, icky person? Now, I have an aside here because there are a lot of folks that are in their trauma drama together. They're hot messes together. A quick story, I was an army chaplain and early on in my career, a young couple came to me. They wanted to get married. He was Navy, she was army. And I said, okay, okay, folks why do you want to get married? And she said, sorry, but you know, I'm going to curse. But she goes, well, I'm fucked up and he's fucked up. So we figure we may as well be fucked up together. Well, I laughed uproariously and I married them and they're 14 years later and they're doing fabulously. But, you know, they're in that drama where the, the hate you, I love you, I hate you, I love you in the drama. I remember I was dating a guy eight years ago and he was six years younger than me and he was had been dating his nanny who was like 25 <laughs> And then he was dating me because she left him in a huff. And then um, she called him desperately. She, her, The lover she left him for, uh, yeah, the lover she left him for had stranded her on the side of the highway with her three kids. Um, and so he said, Liz, you're fabulous, but she needs me. And so I'm like, okay, 
Go be all that. Go be the rescuer. Go be the victim. And if you're bonding there and doing that and you're in that hot mess, as I'll call it, by all means, it's your right. I think we've all been there in the hot mess type of trauma drama relationships and the, where there's a rescuer and a victim. But if you want to, you like to, and you're able and ready and willing, you could move to a, a perhaps a more mature way of thinking about it, where you take that person off the pedestal and go grow your own life. So I have a suggestion. Um, first of all, definitely stop chasing them in the physical reality. Definitely try to stop thinking about them. When you think about them in a desperate manner, turn it around and say, ah, you know, source is providing me the right person at the right time. Or, you know, I'm awesome and wonderful. I'm so high value. If he doesn't want me, she doesn't want me. Well, it's their problem. You know, make some statements. You know, you can message me if you want some nice statements for yourselves. Try to get them off that pedestal and see them neutrally. I know it's hard. And that's why all the clickbaity shits out there on YouTube and everywhere, because people are so desperate for love. They're clicking on and paying $100 and $200 for courses to get their person back, which you can do. I would say it's much better to come from an area of neutrality than with from desperation. I hope that makes sense. So another fun thing you can do, which I have not heard others say, is you can make a fun game of it. Look at it like a confidence game. Like, well, I do I do really admire that person. They don't seem to want me right now. So why don't I work on myself and build my own self-confidence, my own self-confidence, my own self-concept, my own sense of self-worth, and knowing that I'm a high-value king or queen, and make it a confidence game where when I, when I find when I'm attracting them, I know I'm there, I've reached it. And again, I'm not saying they're all that. I'm just saying you could make it a fun game for yourself. Maybe by then you won't even want them. But it's a fun game to play with yourself so you can kind of get a readout on your own self-confidence and self-concept. All right, I think it's fun. I've done that. It's fun. Um, and then also, and uh, Scarlett from Unseen Seraph says this, that if they do text you and you've manifested a text from them, don't immediately go for the booty call. You know, make them wait a little bit. Be neutral. Be polite. Be kind. But say, oh, that's great. Let's say they want you to come over at 10 o'clock at night. I would say, well, you know what? That's great. I can't tonight. But how about we meet for coffee over the next couple of days? How about Saturday? You know, be kind and nice if you want them, but I wouldn't go running to them because then you're being desperate again. Okay. So um, the other I, the other thing I was thinking about is that the other thing, I think it's mildly better if you let the universe provide your best person for you. Um, the reason you want that person is because it's how they make you feel. But a lot of people out there make you feel that way. It's not actually the person. The love you have for another person is actually all about you and how they make you feel. And if you also have loving kindness and you want to love somebody else, you can love lots of people. So it's not really about that person, really, really. If you want them and want to manifest them, by all means, have at it. I'm suggesting that you can love many people and be loved by many people and have that loving feeling by many. Think about your first boyfriend, girlfriend. Oh, they were the one. That might be 10 people ago three wives ago, two husbands ago, and now you love this person. So you know this already to be true. So it may be a good idea to ask the universe to provide someone that's even better for you. And that that I do feel is mildly better to do. Again, do as you wish. And I also will leave you with this. I think that if you really do want to manifest a specific person, I would end an affirmation or whatever it is you're saying you're doing, whether it's mirror work, listening to recordings, writing it down, like, he loves me, she loves me, we're in a beautiful relationship together. I would say, uh, all this or someone better for me, or um, him, her, or someone better for me, because we just don't know, right? We thought our 18-year-old love, our 16-year-old love, a 23-year-old love was the best one for us. And we look back and go, oh, thank God I'm not with that person, right? Am I wrong? So... I think that it's always good to add that little caveat at the end. So to recap, I don't. I think it's moral. I think it's ethical if you want to do it. You're the creator of your reality. And you're probably quantum jumping to the reality where you have your person anyway. Um, it's really good to get to a neutral space where it's actually a fun game for you to try to manifest. And understand that it's how they make you feel that makes you attached to them. It's not even them, really. It's your perception of them. They might be shit bags, and like, you know, but you love them. <laughs> and then the other thing is it might be better just to ask the universe to bring you the best person for you. At the very least, if you're manifesting your specific person, go for it with gusto. I would just say, maybe add comma or someone else better for me. And I'll leave you with that. Happy day. And I'll love you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.